All right, so welcome back. Um, as we saw uh, in the previous lessons, we introduced you to what the Hardy-Weinberg principle um, can be used for, and uh, now we're going to, to take a look at the um, conditions under which the Hardy-Weinberg principle applies. In order for us to calculate the allele frequencies, um, we have to ensure that the population meets seven criteria. And so uh, the seven criteria are listed here. We're going to walk you through each one of these at a time and explain those, um, all seven, uh, as a whole. The first criteria under which Hardy-Weinberg principle applies um, is that mating is non-selective. Non-selective meaning that all variations have equal chance of reproducing. So if I have one variation with pointy ears, for instance, and another variation that has round ears, because each of these alleles are represented, um, as seen in the previous equation, as P's and Q's, um, if the mating is selective and round ears is not preferred, then we will end up with only this allele surviving or having an advantage of surviving and therefore throwing the the equation off. The second condition under which Hardy-Weinberg principle applies um, is that organisms are, are diploid. And this applies because of the nature of the equation with the P's and Q's. If I have a homozygous dominant that refers to the P to the second. The 2PQ refers to the heterozygous. And of course, as we mentioned before, the Q refers to the homozygous recessive. That implies that the alleles are hom on homozygous chromosomes. So connecting to our genetics unit, seeing that in every diploid organism we have traits coming from two chromosomes that are homologous and one of them uh, contains one allele and the other contains the second allele um, then the uh, the trait or the Hardy-Weinberg principle only applies um, if there is a, a one allele for each of those homologous chromosomes the third condition under which the Hardy-Weinberg principle applies is that it must happen under sexual reproduction um, and not asexual. Um, the reason being, um, if we have an individual, for instance, that has a homozygous dominant form, which is, again, equivalent to the capital, capital, um, if that form of the trait is preferable um, and this organism clones itself, then we only end up with other offspring that have the homozygous dominant trait, which will also throw off the equation because the entire equation not only has the dominant allele, but the recessive allele in the equation as well. The fourth condition under which the Hardy-Weinberg principle occurs is that the generations are non-overlapping. This implies that the P generation, the parent generation, um, does not mate with its offspring, which happens to be the F1 generation. So the F1 generation, if it uh, crosses with itself, then that allows you to use the hardy weinberg uh, equation because, again, with the parent generation having been placed on the top of the Punnett square and also on the side of the Punnett square, um, which is where the hardy weinberg equation was derived from, we see that it gives you a certain 
genotypic percentage. And with that genotypic ratio, this blue generation cannot overlap with the parent generations, otherwise it throws off the P squares and 2P Q's and Q squares. The fifth condition out of the seven refers to the population size. The population size must be substantially large, enough to allow the randomness of the mating to occur, um, and uh, enough of the uh, organisms within the population to survive. This is important because if I have a limited number of individuals that carry the trait and one is accidentally uh, killed off or dies for any given reason, whether it be an, a predator or a environmental effect, then only one of the alleles will be able to be passed on to the offspring and the second allele will be erased from the population altogether. The sixth condition is that the allele frequencies are equal in both males and in females. The reason why this is important is because let's presume that we have males that have the the alleles evenly distributed, but there is a limited number of females that for some reason have only one of the alleles expressed, then the females will only be able to pass down the, in this case, the Q because they lack any of the, the, the allele symbolized by P's. And the last condition for which the Hardy-Weinberg principle applies is that there has to be no migration, no mutation, or any sort of selection occurring within the population. This is important because the as we said in previous lessons, the primary use of the Hardy-Weinberg equation is to be able to use it in order to predict the allele frequencies. And if the allele frequencies are disrupted by a new mutation that, let's say, is a new allele represented by a new letter, or a migration of an outside source disrupting the current gene pool of P's and Q's, even if the allele is one of the existing alleles, it will throw off the prediction for which the Hardy-Weinberg principle is meant to predict. So now that we've walked through all seven of the requirements for the Hardy-Weinberg principle to apply, um, let's run through those just one more time. We noted that mating has to be non-selective, that organisms are diploid because the alleles occur on homologous chromosomes, and that only sexual reproduction occurs, not asexual, that the generations are non-overlapping, so parent generations are not mating with the F1 offspring or F2 generations, and that the population size is infinitely large and able to sustain those alleles for an extended period of time, and that the allele frequencies are equal in both sexes in order not to create an imbalance um, when mating occurs, and that there is no migration, no mutation, or selection for either of the alleles.